I was actually surprised when I last summer went to Spain, Malaga, and in a shopping center there, there was an ATM machine and it said, get your Bitcoin here mm -hmm. or get your money here for Bitcoin. So what, what do they actually give you? I didn't try. I didn't have any, so I couldn't try. <laughs> so what, what the uh, Bitcoin ATMs do is um, you hold up your smartphone device, mm -hmm. which has a Bitcoin wallet, and it displays an address that can receive Bitcoin. Um, you show that to the ATM, and you put in some dirty old paper money, mm -hmm. and it spits Bitcoin to your smartphone. Done. Pretty straightforward. The best part of it is that the system is inherently secure, because the ATM only knows how to send you money. Just like if someone has your email address, that doesn't mean they can read your email. That only means they can send you email. Mm -hmm. So, a uh, similar principle to that. And it works the other way around as well? Uh, usually, in most countries, it doesn't. And part of the reason for that is that governments are terrified of the idea of creating a two-way network where you can change from Bitcoin and back very easily. Mm -hmm. Uh, yes. So, as a result, most of these devices are characterized as vending machines that ve that sell you um, magic internet money. Oh, <laughs> that's fantastic. But it, it's often described as, as maybe the big problem with Bitcoin is that if you if you were early uh, cashed in early and you have a lot of Bitcoin, you might be a millionaire today in Bitcoin money. Mm -hmm. But where can you spend it? How can you get? dirty old paper money with your Bitcoin. Because there's a lot of banks that won't give you the old money for it, and like you said, they usually will only go one way. Yes. So am I just going to hoard all this Bitcoin until I, you know, I, I feel like rich. a millionaire? Yeah. <laughs> but it, are we going to see a big change there soon? Well, um, you know, when I first got into Bitcoin, it was actually very difficult to buy anything. The first thing I bought was a pound of coffee beans, which I bought from a small store uh, somewhere in the United States. Uh, based on my latest calculation, I paid uh, $12,000 for a pound of coffee. <laughs> <laughs> Must have been some good coffee. <laughs> <laughs> Nevertheless, those early moves uh, help us build an economy. A lot of people think of Bitcoin as something you buy and then sell or invest in, and that's the wrong way to think about it. Uh, I don't buy Bitcoin. I haven't bought Bitcoin since 2013. I earn Bitcoin. I got paid Bitcoin to come here. Uh, I get paid Bitcoin to do all of my work. It's my primary source of income. All of my contractors get paid in Bitcoin. All of my employees get paid in Bitcoin. So, for example, this morning I sent my video editor a video that I recorded yesterday, uh, pretty much similar to what we're doing here today. And um, they're in the Philippines, and I sent them a Bitcoin payment, which arrived in their bank account 25 minutes later. Mm -hmm. You cannot do that with traditional banking. Now, my um, contractor, they don't know that I'm using Bitcoin. In this particular case, they received Filipino pesos, uh, but that's not a problem. And after a while, actually, they they pick up on what's happening and they go, um, "Can you just send me Bitcoin directly?" And the whole conversation changes. We're creating a closed economy where you can buy and sell things directly in Bitcoin, flights, hotels, things from Amazon. You know, that's easy. Um, but eventually, you know, you have to think of Bitcoin a bit like foreign currency. If you're on the internet as a tourist you use Bitcoin. Mm. If you're in Sweden, you use crowns. Mm. And so when you go on vacation to the internet or you want to buy something there, <laughs> having a bit of Bitcoin, the local currency, serves you well. Of course, there's many others, and you may find lots of different options. <laughs>